Hello, Sparrow family. This is Jeff and Tony Brabeck of Our Little Sparrows. Welcome to the show. Um, we are in the last week of Halloween, and this next Saturday, this coming Saturday, is Halloween, uh, the Halloween holiday. Now, we know, Tony and I know from personal experience, that this can be a tough time of year um, for the holidays in general, but specifically, we're going to talk about um, the Halloween holiday today. So we're going to address five different challenges that we feel that um, parents like us in our community face um, for this uh, Halloween that's coming up. But we're also going to provide five different solutions mm -hmm. that we feel um, are good things to talk about that we can be doing um, to help ourselves um, through this time of year. Mm -hmm. So stick around. We're going to get started right now. Mm -hmm. Now, today we're um, obviously doing a different format. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony and I are used to doing a pre recorded um, educational um, type format where everything is pre scripted out and, and we read verbatim. Um, but this time we felt like, you know, the end of October um, for the rest of the year, November and part of December, um, we would love to come to you guys in a more um, um, free form mm -hmm. um, fashion that mm -hmm. allows uh, you to um, possibly. Um, get a perspective of Tony and I, uh, a different perspective of Tony and I. So uh, we hope you enjoy this format. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to say about the format or? <laughs> no? no. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we, we hope you enjoy this format and uh, stick around. <laughs> We're going to get started right now. All right. So before we jump into Halloween, we actually want to highlight something that's been going on, um, whether it's out in um kind of either local not local but like no i think it, what's happening in our in our world today yeah but it's something that's specific to our community um right. in every one of these episodes um in this format we want to bring something that's applicable to our community mm -hmm. whether it be an article that we saw online and we we were really interested by it mm -hmm. or even um uh celebrities Right. So I think that leads us right into what we want yeah, to talk about. Absolutely. And a lot of us have heard already um, the story of Chrissy Teigen and John Legend and the loss of their son, Jack, um, mm -hmm. which took place, I believe, at the late September. She posted on Instagram um, that they lost their son. And, um, and the feedback on that was mixed. Yes. I didn't get to read a lot of about that, but I heard that there were some very negative, critical comments about Chrissy posting about what had happened and mm -hmm. being so open about the, their loss of Jack and right. just the grief that goes around that. And well, in fact, she was still in the hospital. Yeah, like I, I think that so, was yes. pretty intense for some people. Yeah, to and especially do it so if you're quickly. not exactly mm -hmm. to do it so quickly, and especially if you're not. Um, a parent who's experienced loss, and I think I think I think some of the negativity was coming mm -hmm. from that um, that angle, that perspective. Um, but yeah, definitely mixed responses. Um, yeah. you know, at you know Chrissy Teigen and, and John Legend. So mm -hmm. I'd say for the most part, it was positive. overall it was positive. I think people were really appreciative of her of their openness, right? And it really um, said a lot to um, those of us that have already experienced pregnancy loss and has mm -hmm. actually kind of set the set the tone or maybe um, opening the door for others who mm -hmm. will experience pregnancy loss at some point mm -hmm. that it's okay to to share right. and we want it to it to be okay for people to share so anyways um, recently John performed at the Billboard Music Awards right and it was a song that he wrote um, for Chrissy after the loss of their son just through this through the valleys that they've experienced and it was such a touching song mm -hmm. um i believe it was called we will never break or mm -hmm. something yeah. like that and it was a very powerful song and he made a statement on instagram and um to chrissy about that song and um it was yeah john legend wrote it on his instagram thread so um do you want to talk about that? Or yeah, I had a few things that? That, that I had a few things that stuck out to me. We'll put it up on uh, the screen right now. But um, essentially, uh, John posted several um, several things. I felt like uh, the first thing that I wanted to address is that he really talked about his feelings. Mm -hmm. He talked about the highs, um, the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. And this was all in context uh, with his his marriage uh, to Chrissy. So it was beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. So he just started out with how he's feeling. And I think we can all associate to that. 
he specifically said, we've experienced the highest of highs and the lowest of lows together. Mm -hmm. So right from the beginning, he includes Chrissy um, mm -hmm. and doesn't, doesn't say me, me, me. And so I really liked that he was, it was a, it was a, it was a partnership mm -hmm. is what I really felt. So he went from his feeling, he went right into his understanding of what they're going through. And right here, he recognizes that life is a gift. It's a miracle. And he says, we've experienced the power of joy and now we felt its fragility. Mm. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm pretty sure this is in reference to their, their uh, children that they have already um, had together. And then obviously this loss mm -hmm. and this loss is a new journey, a new right. part of their journey. And so he went right into, uh, you know, this is the realization of our new reality. Mm -hmm. Right. And then he goes into his commitment about Chrissy. And I think this is beautiful. Um, I think it's very important that when families are going through a crisis like this and tragedy, that we need to have a support. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this a lot over the last, um, we started this YouTube channel in April of this year, uh, mainly because of COVID gave us the opportunity. But what we've been going over for uh, the last six months is really talking about support, support, support. And so they have a support. They have each other. Not every every one of us have our partner, right? Mm -hmm. But he talks about as long as we walk this earth, we hold each other's hands through every tear, through every up and down, through every test. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Because he's telling the world that he's in a committed relationship mm -hmm. and this is what he's dedicated his life to as a partnership with Chrissy, Absolutely. which I thought was great. And the last thing that I just wanted to touch on real quick, um, he talked about gratitude. And this really sent me back because... It's one thing to come out and say, this is what we're feeling. This is what we're going through. This is our new reality. Mm -hmm. But then he flipped it all uh, on on its heels, so to speak. And he ended with his gratitude to those who have reached out to the family. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's people they don't even know. Right. And he just basically said, and I'll, I'll, I'll end with this. He said, we feel and appreciate your love and support more than you know. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just... I can't tell you how much I respect this man, mm -hmm. uh, and I respect any person mm -hmm. who would um, embrace their their tragedy, their loss, um, baby loss, uh, in this fashion, and put it so raw and so real, mm -hmm. and put it out to the world. And I don't think this is a person who's boasting in themselves. Right. And that's and that's really what I wanted to get across is that this is genuine. I see a lot of humility and a lot of um, commitment um, to the new journey that they're on mm -hmm. the new uh, the new story that's being written mm -hmm. um because they don't have jack right and there's other things he said um since since the hospital and uh maybe we'll address those in another episode but i just thought that was that was pretty sweet yeah i agree as well i mean if you read his post there's so much that is written in between the lines and it just shows a lot of his commitment to his marriage and to his family Maturity. which i think is Really refreshing. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times we see a lot of breakdowns in the relationships and to see his commitment that he's going to like, I'm going to, mm -hmm. we're going to get through this together. It's really refreshing. Um, Chrissy shared this to her Instagram post or her Instagram. And she said, you know, we are quiet, but we are okay. Love you right. all so much. And then just that one short sentence, I think she said quite a bit, you know, right. they're taking time just to be on their own. Mm -hmm taking a break from social media or whatever obligations they have right. much needed rest and time for healing as just their family unit. And I think that's right. so important. And it shows that the difference between the two relationships mm -hmm. or the two individuals that are in a relationship, mm -hmm. you know how they say opposites attract, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. You see a dramatic opposite. You see John who's like, I want to, I want to get this out there. I want to get it out now mm -hmm. because this is my, this is how I feel. This is my heart. Mm -hmm. And Chrissy's heart is not, not, not that she doesn't want to share, but her heart is saying, we're quiet right now, mm -hmm. um, but we're okay. Yeah. And so that just shows that they're in two different places, mm -hmm. um, but on the same journey. Mm -hmm. And that's normal. Right. Right? I think yeah. this shows normalcy. And it shows that they're supporting each other in right. that, you know, obviously yep. she knew John was going to perform that song. And, and she gave him that you know, opportunity. Yeah. I think she knew, um, but <laughs> I'm assuming so. here. So right. anyways, our hearts are with them for sure. And, um, especially, you know, holidays coming up, it's going to be challenges yeah. for every family that, um, all these different experiencing firsts. loss. 
Right. So, well, if you're if you're getting value out of this so far, you guys, um, we really appreciate you sticking around and watching uh, this episode. You know, subscribe to the channel. That's mm-hmm. the best way to to continue getting the word out there that we're even existing on YouTube. We're a very unique channel. We're we're not your typical. Um, channel that has to, uh, to do with pregnancy and infant loss. Also, if you could ring that bell, you'll get alerts when we post a new uh, episode every week. And then uh, give us a thumbs up on those episodes that you really like and that you found value in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, all this goes to help um, spread awareness of pregnancy and infant loss and getting more people to realize and understand that this valuable resource is here. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Halloween and baby loss. And I think I think this is important to bring up because maybe I I could be wrong, but I feel like Christmas and Thanksgiving kind of get a lot of attention and right. maybe people who are not or who have not experienced pregnancy loss may not realize that Halloween can be a big deal. For families who do or who have had experienced pregnancy loss. Mm-hmm. Um, we did speak about challenges in the holiday season in a previous podcast episode. Yeah, just last week, actually. Very, yeah, just last week. Just and last so we will um, share that link if you'd like to watch that. Um, I don't know where we're going to put that. We'll, we'll put <laughs> it in the description below that, and you'll yeah, see that's it. it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we offer some challenges, or we don't offer challenges, but we kind of... Um, we address. We address challenges yeah. and then offer some solutions that may help you navigate the holiday season as a whole. Um, there's a lot of things that we can experience challenges with, such as, like, conflicting emotions. Um, you know, holidays should be happy, but maybe your heart is feeling not feeling that same way, right. um, and you have also feeling pressures and expectations to uphold traditions or to meet certain obligations as well as energy is a big one I feel like um, mm. energy as a whole in the holiday seasons can be overwhelming and you can feel depleted but when you have grief um, it's even more depleting and so it's very important that um, we need to recognize right. that and then it's also a family-centered time of the year there's a lot of family gatherings mm-hmm. there's um, child focused events um, so there's a lot of emphasis on family and on kids. And so mm-hmm. that can bring up a lot of mixed emotions for families. On all sorts of different levels. Yeah, who yeah. are experiencing pregnancy loss. So oh. we are going to put that link down below. So feel free yeah. to check that out as well. Cool. Mm-hmm. So the challenges uh, that we wanted to bring up um, uh, for Halloween that's coming up this next Saturday, uh, we specifically wanted to focus on you know the child center holiday, which is uh, similar to the family centered, and what we what we mean by child centered is obviously this is about the kids going door to door, getting candy, mm-hmm. getting dressed up. Um, they're trick or treating as trick or treat. Smell my feet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's all these um, traditions. You know that families are either starting or continuing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, And so it varies for everyone. It's a family affair, but the focus is on the child. Mm -hmm. So we feel like, you know, sometimes there's there's that that feeling of missing, Mm -hmm. um, not present. Right. So we're wondering what would our daughter, our son even look like Mm -hmm. in that Captain America outfit or in that, um, you know, minion costume. Mm -hmm. Right. Or the pirate or the policeman or, Mm -hmm. or the nurse. It's like and it hits us in different ways. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we're also asking you know, specific, well, we're obviously with those things, we're asking who would our children, uh, who would have our, who would have our child had been? Mm-hmm. Like what um, would they have picked In the costume, be? yeah, mm-hmm. for, for that Halloween. So. Yeah, absolutely. There's that sense of like, what would, what would they have been? Right. Mm-hmm. There's also challenges too, if um, you have experienced pregnancy loss, but then you also have other living children at home with you. And there may be some emotional conflicts there as well. Maybe you're not feeling up to participating in the Halloween mm-hmm. events, but maybe your kids are. And so there might be a little bit of maybe just having to communicate to each other what expectations and such, and such um, having to work that out with your family. Right. I might have to think kind of a little bit outside the box as to maybe how you can still include your kids, um, but still honor the loss in life of of the baby um, yeah. that was lost. So, yeah. yeah. And you, you sort of mentioned uh, in that the next point is don't feel up for it, right? And yes. what does that mean? We're talking about 
the idea of an entire evening of just opening that door constantly and seeing a child's face mm-hmm. um, that's obviously not going to be your face, uh, your ch- your child's face, right? Mm-hmm. So it's the whole thing of um, of absence, mm-hmm. really, not having your child there. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can be really stressful. It can be anxious, a lot of anxiety for that. Uh, and it just may not be appealing. And that's okay, mm-hmm. right? We all grieve differently. We all grieve in different ways. Yeah. Um, and that's something we've been emphasizing the last six months as well, is that it's okay. You you need to grieve the way you need to grieve. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to grieve, right? Mm-hmm. So um, some of us may choose to stay quiet at home on our first Halloween. I know we did. We did that, yeah. Uh, we actually turned the lights off. We put a bowl out, obviously. Um, we would feel really guilty. <laughs> us, we would. So we yeah. put a bowl out. Um, it's that neighborhood where we know kids are going to come around. Mm-hmm. Um, and just a sign that says, take one, take two, whatever. And it was easy and and it was gentle to our situation. Because mm-hmm. we actually lost Olivia, our firstborn, October yeah. uh, 5th. So there you go. Right Halloween there. Yeah. just two and a half <laughs> weeks later. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And the next challenge would be is that Halloween, <clears> though it's... You know, for younger kids, it's that fun, innocent, kind of cute, you know, is he going to be a pumpkin or a ghost? But Halloween is essentially a lot about death. It's a a celebration of death. And there are a lot of visual depictions, a lot of gory depictions of death, you know, skeletons, you know, murders and haunted houses, (laughs) graveyards and ghosts. And, um, And it can be troubling to... A family who has experienced loss and even just you know the idea of maybe some other child or person wanting to dress up like a mummy or um, like a skeleton you know that they've chosen to dress right. up as like a person who is who's dead right. and maybe the family is struggling with the fact that their child is dead, is dead. Yeah. and so that can bring up a lot of emotions and and so it's a <coughs> visually there's a lot of visual stimulation in that area right. and so that can be very um, challenging for families who have experienced pregnancy loss. that's perfect that actually brings up um the next point which is triggers mm-hmm. so you know, like PTSD, right? We're talking about these post-traumatic syndrome uh, disorder uh, situations. And a trigger is exactly that. Mm -hmm. So um, those who may have had a traumatic experience losing their baby or infant Mm -hmm. may have some of that PTSD. And seeing the blood, the haunting images and sounds, um, like Mm -hmm. Tony said, you know, just the association to death Mm -hmm. in general, right? Um, and it can be pretty heavy. Some of the stuff people are now putting out on their lawns, it's shocking, but with very realistic TV shows images, like yeah. Game of Thrones and Vikings and other things like that, mm-hmm. um, that stuff is becoming more normal. Absolutely. So that's so. all very much, you know, challenging to say right. the least. Yeah. Yep. So those are the challenges, um, the five challenges that we uh, had picked out uh, for this holiday, uh, holiday season. I'm sure that you guys can associate with uh, some of those, if not uh, all of them. You know, if you if you do, you know, put a comment down in the comment section below. Uh, we read all the comments, we answer them. We um, would love to hear from you. Um, if you have questions, feel free to put something down in the comments as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Before we present to you some of the helpful solutions that we have, we want right. to share with you something exciting. Um, that we are going to be doing this week. We are going to be giving away these two of these beautiful workbooks authored by our dear friend Amy Lands, yep. who has um, authored a number of books, but she has created these beautiful workbooks. And um, yeah, um, the first one is Tending to Your Heart After the Loss of Your Baby. And then this other one that we're going to give away is Tending to Your Holiday Heart, Learning to Breathe Through the Loss of a Loved One. And yep. I, we think these are perfect. Um, especially this one for the upcoming holidays right. and this one for the loss of your baby. And these are very simple, practical workbooks. And there's actually not, a, there's not a lot of work involved. It's right. literally, these are suggestions of how to tend to your heart mm-hmm. um, after the loss of your baby or during the holidays. Um, it's got beautiful spaces for journaling and as well, well mm-hmm. blank pages for just whatever you want to fill it with. And um, we think these are great tools to have, and they're pr- easy to go through. They're uh, the suggestions are practical mm-hmm. and simple, well, especially if you feel stuck. 
yeah. and you're like, I just don't know what to do. I'm not a person yeah. that journals. I'm not a person that does X, mm-hmm. Y, Z. And she gives no so order. many different ideas. There's no order no. that you have to go through. It's literally you just Prompts. go through it and you just kind mm-hmm. of feel whatever you you know whatever yep. you identify with. You can do that for that day. Right. So we are going to be giving these away both on Facebook and Instagram. Mm-hmm. So if you go to our um, pages, which is at Our Little Sparrows, and um, you can check for the details there. To enter, um, you just need to like the post, um, follow our pages either on Facebook or Instagram, right. comment which book you'd like, and tag a friend. And each time you tag a friend, that counts as an entry. Yeah. So we're going to run it through the end um, till Friday, the 30th. Right. Until eleven fifty nine PST. <laughs> That's know, we're, Pacific we're a West Coast daylight time. And we're gonna announce the winners on Saturday the thirty first. Right. So very cool. Yeah, check that out. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna move into uh, the five tips that we have. Um, we also um, consider these solutions to uh, those challenges that we first spoke about. Mm-hmm. So here are the five tips um, that we have to navigate um, these challenges for Halloween coming up. The first thing is just to simply be honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, don't try to be something you're not. I'm sure you've heard that um, that phrase before. Uh, and just be truthful uh, to yourself and honest to yourself. That way you can be truthful and honest uh, to those closest to you mm-hmm. that want to do what you want to do, yeah. wherever, whatever you're feeling and wherever you're at. That brings us to our second tip, which is be honest with your living children and others around you, including your spouse or your partner. So this goes back to the possible conflict or that, you know, if you have children at home that want to participate in Halloween and maybe Mm -hmm. you don't want to or maybe you're feeling differently, I think it's important to have a conversation with your children or those that are supporting you around you about what your expectations are for the right. for the day and also allow them to have that same opportunity as well with you to mm-hmm. allow them to express to you um, how they're feeling and what they would like to see happen for that day. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's totally applicable. And um, obviously for those of you who don't have children, it's your spouse, it's your partner, mm-hmm. um, or it's your extended family, yeah. your in-laws. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or your parents, uh, yeah. either way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the third tip that we have um, for this Halloween that's going to help you with those challenges would be to honor your baby. Mm-hmm. Um, and specifically, you can do different things. Um, you can light a candle. You can carve out an extra pumpkin. I really like that idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, you Obviously, there's a lot of levels of creativity in that um, mm-hmm. or just simply having uh, a smaller pumpkin mm-hmm. that you got from the grocery yeah. store or uh, whatnot, pumpkin farmer's market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think the last thing that you put on here, which I really liked was creating a new tradition. Yeah. Um, and we'll get more into this as we get closer to, um, Thanksgiving and then obviously Christmas. Uh, we're going to talk about those two holidays coming up here in the next few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, new traditions are huge, mm-hmm. um, in general this time of year. Yeah. Um, the fourth tip is to know your limits. So if you know that, um, certain visual, you know, Halloween displays may trigger um, right. some emotions in you that are difficult to deal with, then it's okay to say no to going to those areas or mm-hmm. say no going to that uh, Halloween event mm-hmm. that might have those kinds of triggers. Stay behind, let them go, and then catch yeah. up later. Whatever, right? Yeah, and know your limits yeah. and, and be okay with saying no to some of those. Yeah, mm-hmm. it just... And don't feel, I mean, we don't want you to feel like you have to modify your whole life because you lost your baby. That's not the mm-hmm. perspective we're trying to give. Right. What we're trying to give is that, you know, this is a really tough time of year and we may have to adjust for that, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean this is forever. Right. It's just, it's for right now. Yeah. And it's really a day-to-day thing. Totally. Um, kind of also to add to that would be, you know, social media <sighs> has a lot of posts about, you know, kids right. trick-or-treating or just... You know, Sometimes you gory it images. It <laughs> it's okay to take a break from yeah, social media. So totally. you know things like that. I, mean, those I blocked are just, you for a while. Yeah, so thank you. No, yeah, <laughs> but those are Anyhow. just a couple of suggestions of just understanding and knowing what your limits are. Right. What is okay? Be realistic you know, with yourself. Yeah. yeah. Take just kind of tend or to honest. your heart a little bit. If it's not going to be a good situation for you, then you know maybe there's a way you can po- politely back out. You yeah. Know? 
Um, the fifth and final uh, tip that we have for everyone today is just to be kind to yourself. I think mm-hmm. this pretty much goes back to the first tip, yeah. uh, being honest with yourself, being kind with yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're al- almost synonymous with each other. But um, in general, when we say to be kind with yourself, it means, you know, be gentle. Be mm-hmm. uh, Don't give yourself pressure to perform. Um, for others, right? To mm-hmm. to do what the expectations are. I, I really like what we said um, in the holiday episode uh, last week's podcast, where we said um, um, that we don't have to we don't have to match what everything around us or everyone around us says we should feel feel mm-hmm. right or 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 how we should embrace this holiday or that holiday. Um, and I think family gatherings kind of go along with that too, Mm -hmm. but yeah, no pressure to yourself to participate in anything. Um, you know, moderation is probably the best, uh, advice, just like we were given when we were kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, if you're not excited, you're not excited. Yeah. So I really like that. Good tip, Stone. (laughs) (laughs) You're welcome. All right. Well, you, if you found that helpful to you, please subscribe to our channel. Give this a thumbs up. Even if you didn't. Or if you Go didn't. ahead and subscribe. You can do it. <laughs> and give us a thumbs up so people yeah. can find us right. and ring that bell so then you can get alerts when we post a new video every week. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, I know we addressed um, a chunk of things, and, and sometimes it can be overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Um, and we get that. We understand that. We've been there, done that. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those of you who don't know our specific story, it, this year, this October was seven years ago mm-hmm. uh, that we lost Olivia. So... Um, we've, we've been around, uh, the Halloween block, uh, this will be our seventh year of going around that block. Um, and even though we have a four year old, uh, James, um, we still remember, Mm -hmm. especially when we see cousins, Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we've got a pair of cousins that one's a male and one's a female, right? And one, I mean, they're, they're the ages that Olivia and James, um, are, or should have been. Uh, and James is our four year old that we have today. So when we see that, it takes us right back to day one, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it also kind of tugs at our heart. It tugs at our heart and says, "That's what would have been, mm-hmm. or that's what should have been." Um, and, and we know some of you are going through this, and some of you have just begun the journey. Yeah. Um, but that's why we're here uh, to support you guys. Mm-hmm. We're trying to meet you wherever you're at in your journey, um, and it, it's just, you know, as we're supporting you, hopefully. Um, hopefully you're finding the support that you need um in these in these episodes so i mean at the end of the day we just uh want to be a heart with ears for you guys uh even though this is very instructional and very uh educational um what we're trying to what we're trying to help you uh with on the journey Mm -hmm. uh at the end of the day um to support you in the best way possible is when we're the heart uh with ears uh just listening Mm -hmm. so again if you guys have questions you have comments uh go ahead and write it down below we do respond to all of them um and we have you have our contact information Uh, you can reach us email Uh, we even have a direct phone Uh, and our promise to you is to get back to you within 24 hours Mm -hmm. uh, and be that heart with ears and walk with you on that journey absolutely we hope you found this episode helpful and we want you to know that you are not alone You are loved, and your baby will always be cherished. We are here to help you in any way we can. And if you guys are watching us after the live uh, and you are on the recorded episode, then you can click or tap on the image above, and you're going to be able to access our weekly podcast uh, playlist and uh, check out those episodes. Or if you tip, uh, tip, if you click or tap on the image below, then you'll access our playlist for our, our grief series. It's the Pregnancy Journey, Grieving from Diagnosis uh, to the Loss of Your Baby and Beyond. Mm-hmm. And that series really takes you, uh, it dives deep and takes you through the whole journey um, if you were pre-diagnosed uh, with a fatal or life-limiting condition, um, pregnancy. Mm-hmm. 